All right, folks. So in today's video, we are going to update the firmware on the Nikon IC705. We're going to go from version 1.1.0 to 1.2.0. It's a pretty straightforward process, so stay tuned and we'll get started. Before we get started, I did want to mention down here there's some buttons. A like button, a comment button, a subscribe button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. Now let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start our journey at the ICOM America slash EN for English website. And I believe we want to go up here to support and see what happens. And maybe it's under resources. Here we go, the download database. If I go to amateur and then I go to handhelds, there are four downloads for the IC705. Okay, so here are the IC705 downloads. You can get your product brochure. You can get your instruction manual. It's actually two manuals, a, a basic and an advanced, and you're going to want both of those. There's a high resolution image and we don't need that, but we want to click on firmware slash software. This takes us to the ICOM IC705 page. So when you come down here, there's some news, there's some catalog brochures, instruction manuals, uh, guides. <clears throat> As I mentioned, you want the basic manual in English if you speak English. And then you want the advanced manual in English. Further down the page, you have your programming software, your firmware, your USB driver, repeater list, and another USB uh, driver, which looks to be of a different version. So we are going to click on the firmware. And the latest is version 1.2.0. And here are some changes from version 1.12. Uh, spectrum scope is improved. Preset function is added for FT8 operation, which is cool. They add support for the AH705 automatic antenna tuner, and there's some other changes. This is the one that I'm most interested in, a WAN, uh, W-L-A-N, so it's a wide area, local area network access point mode is added. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that does. There's some other stuff. And you can read all about this, but this is the firmware that's updated and the different version numbers. Your file size is uh, 8.16 megabytes and it's going to come down uh, in a zip file. Now there's a manual download page where you can get the manual. We talked about that a little bit. And then I guess this is, this, this here probably says subscribe to the Smoke and Ape channel, but I'm not entirely sure. Regarding this download service, you have to read all these words, and then I'm going to say I have read fully, understood, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download the firmware. So in my downloads folder on this PC, I have a folder that I created called IC705, and that's where I have this zip file that I just downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click on that, and I'm going to see that there is a DAT file, and I'm going to extract all. It's going to ask me for a location within the 705 folder, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extract that. And now in my 705 folder, there is a 705E120 for the version of the firmware, and there's a DAT file, and I'm going to need that DAT file. <clears throat> So I talked about the importance of downloading the manuals. This is the basic manual. And the reason I recommend that you download this is if you scroll through the table of contents, you'll see there is chapter six on the micro SD card. And the reason this is somewhat important, uh, it takes a look at it. It says tip ICOM recommends that you save your transceivers factory default data for backup about the micro SD cards. You can use a micro SD card of up to two gigabytes or a micro SDHC up to 32 gigabytes. ICOM has checked the compatibility with the following types of cards. And it says to use a uh, SanDisk and we don't actually have a SanDisk. I believe ours is a Samsung card. So we're gonna go ahead and try it with, a, with one of those. And if you take a look, this chapter goes through saving data. It goes through formatting. And this is uh, the part in particular that I want to review formatting before micro, using a micro SD card, format it to be used for the transceiver by doing the following steps. So we're going to follow these steps to go ahead and we're going to format our card on our IC705. And it also goes through saving the data and unmounting. So before you remove a card when the transceiver is on, be sure to electrically unmount it as shown below. Otherwise the data may be corrupted or even deleted. So I was open to use this uh, micro SD card, but I can't. 
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this one instead. Now you want to be somewhat careful putting this SD card in. I've seen where people put them in backwards, upside down, uh, all kinds of things, and then trying to get them out with tweezers. The port is clearly marked SD card, and when you put it in, you want the notch facing up. And it goes in easy peasy, just like that. And make sure to close the boot, just so everything's secure. All right, let's go ahead and boot this up. In the lower corner, you can see it says 1.1, but that might have been hard to read, so we'll take another look. You can see up at the top right-hand corner, there is an icon for the SD card, letting you know that the SD card is inserted and mounted. Let's play around with the menu. We want to go to the second menu and then go to set. Now I'm going to poke around in here a little bit. And try to find the SD card option. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for format and there it is. So let's mount or format, I should say, the card. It's going to ask me if it's okay. This will erase whatever was previously on that card. So be careful. When we're done, we want to unmount the card. And now that that's done, we're going to exit out of the menu. And we're going to power the radio off. You can see the icon is no longer visible. Oh, let's just check the version real quick. So again, I'm going to poke around in here. And what I'm looking for is others. It's there at the bottom. And then I want to click on information. And then version. And then here you can see the main CPU is set to 1.10. Now we're going to exit out and power down the device. So I've taken the formatted SD card and I placed it inside my PC via a USB attachment. And inside the USB uh, drive, you can see that there is a folder called IC705. We saw this in the instructions. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open that up, and then I'm going to go over to this folder, uh, which is the extracted DAT file that we saw earlier. I'm just going to drag and drop it over, and it's going to go ahead and it's going to copy it to that folder, and that should be enough. Now I'm going to right-click on the USB drive D, and I'm going to pick Eject, and that way I can safely remove it from my computer without damaging the SD card. We're going to take that SD card, and we're going to put it back in our IC705. Chapter 17 in the advanced manual covers updating the firmware, and it's probably a pretty good idea to take a look at this as well. It says you can update the firmware using a micro SD card, updating the firmware adds new function and improves the performance parameters, and it gives you a place to download it off of ICOM Japan slash support. Here it says important to update the firmware. First, you must format your micro SD card using the IC705, then copy the downloaded firmware data from your PC into the ICOM or the IC705 folder on the card. It walks through making sure that uh, your radio is on and checking your firmware version. We're gonna do this on my radio and you're gonna see that I'm actually using 1.10, 1.10. Um, and it talks about preparation where you can get the different information, how to download the files, how to unzip it, and then actual updating of the firmware. It says, Never turn off your transceiver while updating the firmware. If you turn off the transceiver or a power failure occurs when updating, the transceiver firmware will be damaged, and you will have to send your transceiver back to the nearest ICOM distributor for repair. This type of repair is out of warranty, even if the transceiver is warranty period is still valid. It also says to make sure that your battery pack is fully charged. So my battery pack is fully charged and we are going to connect it to my MFJ 4230 DMP power supply. It just walks through uh, copying your files over to the card and then walks you through the procedure, which we are going to do right now. Okay, so let's power this thing up. And when we do in the lower right hand corner, once again, you can see that it still says 1.1.0. Once it's on, we are going to go into the menu. And then we go to set. And then we're going to go to SD card. And there is an option for firmware update. 
And it tells you that this is a high-risk operation and you could mess up and cause terrible things to happen. And we're going to agree. Here we get a message saying that we could lose the settings in our radio. I don't have any per se, but I'm going to hit yes and go ahead and make a backup of my settings. And then we'll actually walk through the restore of those settings as well. That is complete. And then there is the firmware update file. And this says it could take approximately two minutes. You have to push and hold that yes button. Now it's checking the integrity of the DAT file that we copied over from our computer. And now it's processing the update itself. We did use internet magic to speed this up so we wouldn't have to sit through the whole thing. But it goes pretty fast. Once done, it says the 705 will automatically restart. When it does, you can see in the lower right hand corner, it says 1.2.0. And it looks like uh, everything has been reset. So I'm going to go back into set function in the menu. I'm going to go down the SD card. And then I'm going to go to load setting. And this is from the backup that we made. And I'm going to choose all my settings. I hit yes. And I hit yes again. It checks the integrity of the file and then it loads it to the radio. I probably should have sped this up too, but I didn't. And it's complete and it's telling me to restart the 705. So what I want to do here is I want to exit out and I can't. So I'm just going to power it off and pray that it's not bricked. Boots back up at 1.20. And it looks like my previous settings are restored. Let's go back into the menu. And we are going to check the version. And then you can see right there, main CPU 1.2.0. This is the point where I say thanks to everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Post any comments, questions, suggestions, or recommendations in the comments below. And I'll do my best to respond. Thanks, everybody.